Hello, this video is going to be about sort of the problems you may run into if you're using a gas mask and the sort of false sense of securities people can get with masks because I do see a lot of comments where people kind of assume that the mask can always do something and give them a certain amount of time protection and everything like that which is a really dangerous mindset to get into because obviously there's lots of ways you could die even if you have a mask and you're exposed to chemical agents or similar. So. The first point I want to bring up is filter time, or time until the filters expire, especially when exposed to certain kinds of gas, because chlorine and phosgene are both known as gases which will very quickly expire filters. Blood agents as well, supposedly. Things like that. So, the reason that I'm obviously bringing this up is, especially even more so of a cheek filter mask, if you've got your filters in the mask, you can't change without taking the mask off, and your filters have been in the mask a while prior to actual combat, uh, you've got a bit of a problem because you don't know how long these filters are going to last. Now, cheek filters don't last long at the best of times because they were designed to be compact and lightweight. So, simply having two filters doesn't mean they're going to last longer because obviously if one filter expires before the other, you're doomed unless you can somehow block that filter up and carry on breathing through the other one. At which point, the other filter, of course, isn't going to last long either simply due to the fact that then you've got a filter that's not going to last very long taking in all the air you're inhaling, not um, some of it. So that's obviously a problem, but even with canister filter masks you know, you're going to have to change the filter if it runs out but do you know of enough warning if it's going to run out so you can change it? So that's the thing to consider is obviously if you're exposed to chemical agents you do need to get out of there fast, you can't, you know sit around and then say, hmm, my filter's going to last X amount of time exactly, therefore it will be fine. Also, if certain chemical weapons are used in combination, that can deplete filters faster. So, there's lots of factors to consider when it comes to the time a filter is physically going to last you. Um, you know, you need to make sure that you can get out of the situation you're in with enough time. Next thing is the type of gas and what do your filters protect you from. I've seen lots of people who just assume you can buy one kind of filter and it'll block every kind of gas known to man or threat known to man and you'll be fine. And while it's true a combination filter like an ABEC P3 filter is going to stop lots of different threats, um, same as lots of modern CBRN filters, it doesn't stop 100% of them. As I've said before, carbon monoxide in decent quantities is always going to get through a mask and poison you because filters can't block carbon monoxide, at least not efficiently at all. In very low concentrations in open air, supposedly masks do take some of the carbon monoxide or stop it, but they can't deal with it efficiently. So that is obviously something to bear in mind as well, that you can't simply assume because you have a mask you're protected from whatever sort of a chemical threat it is. Also, unless you have chemical detecting electronic equipment or complex papers, you're probably not going to know what the gas is. So that means you don't actually know ahead of time, can your filters protect you from it or not? Especially if you've got no time and it's already upon you, you're just going to have to put your mask on and run for it, not sit around and then see if it will block it or not. So there's always things like that which are a worry. Another thing as well is full-on NBC and CBRN gear. Obviously, if you're exposed to nerve agents, um, which are very lethal, unless it's the ones that happen to be in the media now and again, which aren't real nerve agents, uh, Actual nerve agents are incredibly in, uh, incredibly lethal. Even tabun, the weakest of the nerve agent, needs something like 4 or 5 grams to touch your skin to kill you. In the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot. Once you get to sarin, it's less than 1 gram. When you get to things of VX here, it's sort of 1 gram has enough poison in it to kill 500 to 1,000 people through skin contact alone. With all of these gases or vapours, it's even less if you inhale it rather than coming into it on, into contact with your skin in liquid form. So, that's another thing as well, is you do need full CBRN protection in these sort of environments, not just having a mask, whereas lots of people assume if they've got a mask they'll be fine. And that brings me on to as well, like those bottle masks. I've already spoken about these, but a homemade gas mask does not provide adequate protection at all from high-level chemical weapons. It's better than nothing against tear gas and stuff like that. But, as I said, it's one of those things better than nothing, not good. So what you need to ex understand as well is if a mask doesn't make a proper face seal with your face or it doesn't have a complex enough filter, what's going to happen is you're going to get some of the agent blocked but a lot of it is going to seep around the side of the mask or get through the filter. If 100% gas enters the filter it might be something like 30% gets through again with something like nerve agent that's a lethal dose easily. So that's more factors to consider as well 
that obviously lots of chemical agents are you know going to get you if you've not got a proper mask and another thing as well is people who assume things like dust masks give adequate protection I've had lots of people saying this on the video where I was explaining why dust masks don't have adequate protection with masks there's a good level of protection offered by lots of even proper respirators and then there's other factors that can be put on a mask to make them even better softer rubbers that make a better face seal, better strap systems that cover more of your face uh, you know pulling each part of the mask tighter peripheral seals and things like that will make sure that obviously all of the mask is making as good a seal as possible with your face, getting it in the right size. If you simply buy a one size fits all dust mask, especially the ones with only one rear strap, not two rear straps, because I'm sure you know you put one lower and then one higher um, with dust masks to make a better seal, but they're still not a great seal, um, you're not going to get adequate protection. There's been lots of studies done for like workplace health surveys and things like that where in many different countries they have found that obviously using a dust mask still leads to long-term health effects because the dust mask is blocking something like 80% of the dust and not 100%. So you're more just lowering risks, not eliminating them, which can give people a false sense of security. Going back to the first sort of points, lots of people think if I have some sort of mask and filter, therefore I'm protected and they may expose themselves to more risks unless if they didn't have a mask at all, which again is going full circle with the sort of problems you're going to run into. You're either going to have a mask <clears throat> and it's not going to give adequate protection and you think it will, or you have filters that aren't going to last long but you think they'll last forever, or you know you have a filter that you assume will do the job but it actually won't because it's not a filter designed for the right type of stuff. So, hopefully you know that's gone over some of the major points here. A gas mask or respirator is a very useful tool in protecting yourself from lots of airborne hazards. The point is it doesn't protect you from 100% of the things 100% of the time, and you really need to kind of know what a respirator will protect you from, what it won't, and then, you know, act accordingly. Don't assume it will do something, you know, make an arse of you and me, um, and then die from it or get long-term health effects because, oh no, the filters inside weren't good enough for the job that I needed them for, or they weren't the right type of filters, or the mask didn't fit me properly, or the filters wouldn't last long enough for what I was exposed to, or I hadn't done a fit check on the mask and it wasn't the right size for my face. There's lots of things that could go wrong with a respirator, and that's ignoring things like, which I've covered before, having a filter that you've not taken the plug out of and suffocated, using old asbestos filters, which even if they protect you at the time, may lead to lung problems later down the road. There's lots of things with a respirator that can go wrong unless you plan for them, so don't just buy any old thing assuming it will work. Hopefully you found this video fairly informative.